Anything from the homework stuff? We didn't talk about. We're into chapter five now. By the way, let's have a quiz. On. If you college good, <laughs> if you understand college, you know that you want more grades, right? So how do you get ready for this quiz? You do as much homework from five one through five four as you can. Uh, by this Thursday, you should be done three to five four. If you're keeping up, <coughs> if you're in four three or something and you haven't even done nine yet, maybe come back to nine later. Maybe go into this now. All right? Everybody with me? Yeah. All right. You're all like, we're in the same room, dude. Um, <laughs> that's about as far as we go. I understand. <laughs> so no questions from anything else? Okay. Um, let's all turn to page 82 in the green book. Carrie, can I show me? Thank you. You're like, you do it all the time, Jeff. Page 82. <coughs> oh, you know, before I do that, we didn't quite finish that handout from last time, did we? Let's do that first before I forget. Anybody need that handout from last time? Did you hand it out on Monday? Yes, we did. Yeah, last time. Put it up here. It looks like this. Let's get this. So last time we did this. We'll come to the green book in a minute. Last time we got through this much, and we stopped short of these things here. Did, did, did most of you guys finish this whole thing? I think most of you guys got, at least had a chance to get to the end. Um, yes, ma'am. So here, this, is, this whole thing is to the zero. So something to the zero is one minus four times something to the zero. Yes, sir. Oh, you stretch. All right. Tricking me. All right, so is that is that decent? Okay, so if you weren't here last time, you can always request to look at this. But you, you know, it's up on the video too. You can see it all happening in like real time. Um, okay, let's just go here. So this is really. Do you remember scientific notation we just talked about? So what gets me going with scientific notation? What do I? What's it effectively just doing? Moving the decimal place. How far do I move it until I'm yeah, in this case, you're going to move it until I get past five. I want to stop right there. So how many did I go? Two, four, six, eight, it looks like. If I count it right. Yay, Jeff. So that would be what? How do I write that? 5.2 times 10 to the... Yeah, why negative? Let's start off small. Yeah, if you like right and left, go for it. One thing I hate about right and left is when I'm doing it this way, it's it's right. But when I'm rewriting a negative, it goes back. I mean, so it's you got to remember that. If you just remember, small is negative power. So a negative power is small number. Big is a positive power. So uh, a positive power means a big number. You see what I'm saying? So then, or if you like right and left, feel free. Um, so this guy is grouped beautifully, three, because it, it, of course it starts at the end, all oh, decimal four whole numbers at the end. I always get somebody just put it somewhere just randomly and start moving it around. No, 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 it's at the end. 
3, 6, 9, 10, 11. Is that cool? So that would be how what? Yeah. Because every time we multiply by 10, it becomes one decimal place bigger, bigger, bigger. So that is just another way to write that number. I always have somebody that does this. That's a totally different number. My God. If you put that in the calculator, for example, what is 3.12 to the 11th power is that number. Whatever the shit, right? Now watch. Let me see what it does. If we put 312... Zero, 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 zero. Let's see what my calculator does. Ah, there. See, there's that E. So I put the number in like this, and it spits it out like this. What's that E mean? Well, it must mean times 10 to the. So little E dude is times 10 to the. I like it. Okay. What about this stuff here? Which way am I going to move the decimal? I'm going to make this to the right so I can make it big. So i got to go how many times to get around the numbers? One, two, and four zeros. I love it. i got to move six places total. So two places just to get around those dumb numbers. And then i got to go one, two, three, four more places. Your zeros don't have to get smaller like that. They just did. All right, so what number is that? Beautiful. So a million is 10 to the sixth, because a million has six zeros. Right? It's kind of nice. What about this one here? To the left. So you got one to get around that one. So always with a negative power, how many zeros do you have? You have. In this case, we're going to have four. four. It's always one less than this number. So it's one, two, three, four zeros. It's negative, and I put nine in. So one, two, three, four, five, five places back to make it small. <clears throat> or left, if you like that. <coughs> All right, how's everybody doing with scientific notation? Okay. <laughs> Can somebody tell me, look at all these options down here for number four, which I will tell you this, there is one of them that is not a polynomial, just one. Which one? So some of you guys think it's B. There's not a damn thing wrong with B. Nothing wrong with B. Something X cubed, something X4, something X. Sure, that's a one half. Is there anything wrong with the number one half? No, not a damn thing. We think there is. Poor little one half didn't do anything to anybody. C is the one that's got a problem. What's wrong with C? It's, negative power. it's got a negative power. It's got a non-whole number. What's a whole number? Starts with a whole. Zero. Zero, one, two, three. Those are whole numbers. That has a non-whole number power. It's not a polynomial. What letter? What letter? What value of M can I not use? Because what would M to the negative one be? One over M. What value of M could I not use? Zero. Polynomial, I'm supposed to be able to use anything I want to. It's supposed to be nice, behaved. That's what we call it, a well-behaved function. Polynomials are well-behaved. All right, so this is no, not a polynomial. Okay, what about this guy? Is he? Well, obviously, everybody else is. What type is this one? Binomial. What degree? Second degree, good, because that's still a first, and that's the second, so it's a second degree binomial. And what's the leading coefficient? Careful. What's the number in front of the highest degree term? Negative. What's the highest degree term? Oh, one. Yeah, so there's an understood one here. So the leading coefficient is one. It's the coefficient of the highest degree term. We call that the leading coefficient. What about this dude? What's the degree of this? Four. Fourth degree. Fourth degree what? Trinomial. Trinomial. 
Yeah, not black belt. Fourth degree trinomial, because he's got three terms, like triceratops. And what's the leading, now on this one, what is the leading coefficient? What's the highest degree term? This one. What? Isn't that higher than that? Okay. Is a fourth degree higher, larger than a third degree? Yes, there you go. So that the leaning coefficient is the number in front of the highest degree term. Um, so why is it not the one? Because somebody wrote this stupid thing out of order. So you find the highest degree term and the number in front of it, that's the leaning coefficient, negative four. Kick ass. This one's not a polynomial, so you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. This one is neat. How many terms? So it's a monomial, not unionomial or whatever. Monomial. What degree? Zeroth. That's a new term for us. Zeroth degree. Why zeroth degree? Because how many letters do you see? How many letters does seven have? Zero. There's no. There's no x. There's no nothing. In fact, let me see if you guys can handle this. Did I change anything by putting that x to the 0? What is x to the 0? 1. So 7 times x to the 0 is 7. So look, the power is 0. This is 0 with degree then. Do you see how it all kind of matches up maybe? What's, so what's x to the 0 mean? I got no x's. It just becomes 1, so they don't show up because you ain't got none of them. That's what a 0 power means. That's why I call it 0 with degree. Yes, sir? So if you put a 2? On this x, yeah. then it would be second degree. Yeah. So remember, be careful. It's not just the power that determines the degree, right? If I had x squared, if I had 7x squared y, what's the degree of that term? What's the degree of 7x squared y? How many letters do you see total? I see two x's and a y. So how many letters do I see total? Three. Three. That's a third degree. So degree doesn't mean exponent, or else we wouldn't have called it degree. We would have just called it exponent. Degree means total number of letters I see. It's two X's, one Y, that's third degree. Bless you. How come B was a fourth degree then? Uh, All right, so each term has a degree. What's the degree of this first term? Third. What's the degree of this term? Fourth degree. What's the degree of this term? First degree, which one wins? So you can have the degree of each term, but the degree of the polynomial is the highest degree. Remember that? That's why I just didn't care about the other ones. I just looked at the highest one. Oh, shit. What's this? What's the degree of this polynomial? Let me zoom out. Holy crap. All right. I think I heard the right answer. What's this guy's degree? Six. Let's see, five X's and an A. Ninth degree? Eleventh degree. So what's the degree of this polynomial? Eleventh degree. Eleventh degree trinomial to be really precise. Oh, you guys love that shit. But please don't make it more than that. That's all it is. Degree, what's it mean? How many total variables do you see? I see 10 X's and 1 A, so 11. That's all it is. Oh, cool. We're done. Yay. I think. What's the leading coefficient to this? Let me take this out of here. Seven. Yeah, it's got to be 7. That's the only thing there is. So the leading coefficient is 7. Okay, I like it. I like it. Okay, so let's come back to the green book. This is page 82. <clears throat> what 
does like terms mean? I mean, you can see the definition of it. Constant terms are terms containing the same. All right, so they have the same letters and the same amount of each letter. All right, so look at number two. Which terms in there are like terms? Is there anybody that goes with him? Minus four. Yeah, so this goes with him. What about this guy? No. Why not? Because it's only got one x and two y's, and this has two x and one y. So that you can't. So all I'm doing is consolidating what I can. If I had eleven giraffes and three monkeys, and then four giraffes, I got fifteen giraffes and, and three monkeys, whatever it is. Right? I can consolidate. I'm not going to go. How many dogs are there? There are three dogs and five dogs and seven. No, no, dude. Add the shit together. Oh my God. And seven cats. No, don't add that in. That's not like terms. Right? That's not dogs. <coughs> so 3x squared y minus 4x squared y. So what I normally do for myself, I'll underline those like terms. Is there anybody that goes with this guy? Yes. 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 Just because they're out of alphabetical order doesn't it? So how many x's does this guy have? One. one, and he's got one Y. Anybody else have one X and one Y? Yeah, they just wrote it out of alphabetical order. Doesn't make it not like terms. Is X, Y different from Y, X? If you thought so, then three times four is not the same as four times three. That's crazy. Doesn't matter what order they're in when it's multiplying, right? Okay. So watch what I do. I do amazing things. I change the underline. <laughs> so this poor guy is left out. Got nobody to go with. Okay. So then I got three of these minus four of these is negative one of them. Negative two of these plus ten of these. Yeah, plus eight of these. And then I got this poor guy just sitting there waiting. We've done this before. It's just when we start dealing with polynomials, it's going to come back in a big way. It's like terms. Say again. So negative 2xy's plus 10xy's is 8xy's. I'm just consolidating. Totally, because x times y is the same thing as y times x. So I just wrote it out of order. Try to do number 1. That should be a little more direct. This will not make sense to some of you, but let me warn you, your answer should not have x to the eighth in it. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. There is no x to the eighths up there. How can you find some x to the eighths then? for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's 4x to the 4th? Plus 5x to the 4th. 9x to the 4th. So you understand some people will put 9x to the 8th. And I'll say, how the hell did you get 9x to the 8th? I don't see any. What's the only time exponents can change? What are exponents based on? What are exponents based on? Multiplication. So they will only change when I am multiplying. Am I multiplying? I'm adding. So I'm just consolidating how many of those things I've got. Does it matter how you start? Oh, that's fine. That's really fine. Normally, we look, if possible, right in descending order. So I'm going to put the highest degree first and go from there. Do it again. You did, you divided 5x to the 4th with 3x to the 2nd. No, no, definitely not. 4x to the 4th. Plus 5x to the 4th. 
is how many x to the force? 9x to the force. So which one of these can I combine? The ones that are the same. The ones that have the same exponent, same letters and the same amount of each letter. Does it have to be order? Yeah, in this case it does say right in descending order. So you get the highest degree first and go down from there. So what comes next? Any x cubes? Yeah. X cubes? X to the third power. No. And then x squares, we got negative 3x squared minus x squared. Minus 4x squared. Minus 4x squared. Plus 5x. Good. Minus 2x plus 7x plus 5x. And then finally the numbers, negative 1 plus 12 plus 11. Now if you want to, you can rewrite and move things around. That's fine. But I try to show you a way to kind of cut it out, not have to rewrite this stuff over and over and over again. Here, what about the last one? It's the same idea, really, right? So what do you get? How many? Any more A to the force? Yeah. Yep. So I get how many A to the force? Four. Four. Total, Total 11. What about cubes? You got one here. And when there's a negative 3a cubed, minus a cubed, minus 4a cubed. Any a squares? Just one of them right there. Yeah, so minus a squared. And then I got one poor little a dude all by himself. So I got fourth power, third power, second power, first power. I got all those in there. I don't have anything higher than fourth power because that's all I had is, is fourth power. I can't have higher than that. I really want that to make total sense. The only time an exponent can change is if I multiply or divide, because that's what it's based on. So if I'm just adding stuff together, there's no way in hell that the exponent can change. Okay. All right, so a little review. <coughs> but now we're putting it in functional notation. Oh, shit. Big deal. What's this taking the place of? Y. Okay, whoop de doo So what's the degree of this dude? Good, that's the highest degree I see, fourth degree. What about this guy? Yeah, this will be third degree. Can you make a degree two, also known as quadratic? Polynomial. Just, just create a degree two polynomial. Let's see what you guys make. Just create your own polynomial that has degree two. That's that's another name for degree two, quadratic. So I'm going to make one up too. Here, here's mine. You could just say. I'm done. <laughs> That's acceptable. Isn't that, what degree is that? There you go. There's a degree two polynomial. If you want to be a little more creative, you can have some more terms in there. There you go. You don't have to have decimals. <laughs> it's just me. So some of you guys may have heard this is quadratic. It's related to the quadratic formula because that solves things that have this this that solves things that has this in it. English is my second language after math. Question. Yes. Can you have another variable in the quadratic? Certainly. Uh, so what what do you create? Or is that your general question? So you can something X plus something Y. Oh sure. Yeah. Uh, all I had to be was degree two, and in general, those are called quadratic. So here's another example of something: seven ax plus five y. Sure, because that's going to be second degree right there, right? Okay. So I like to put this kind of question, and I'll go one step further. I'll say create a fourth degree trinomial, because I hate asking you definition questions, but I do ask questions that check to make sure you know what things mean. I don't want a trinomial, a polynomial, I have three, no, screw that. 
but use it correctly. Understand what it means. Uh, degree one polynomial. Polynomial. Eleven x. Sure. Plus two, if you want. Eleven x plus two y. That works too, doesn't it? What's the degree of this term? What's the degree of this term? So it's a first degree polynomial. Yes. Oh, I just not putting. I could just put like a p of x here if I wanted to, right? Does that change the equation? No. It does more specifically make it a polynomial function, but this is the polynomial function. This is its name. That is the p of x function. All right. And in terms of evaluating these things, they are no different than any other function. Do this problem real quick. They work the same way as they did before. So the function idea stays the same. It just happens to be a polynomial function. So here I get 2 times 4. Here I get 5 times 2. Here I get 1. So I get 19. Sweet. F of 0 is awesome. I can see F of 0 real quick. Anything that has an x dies. So what's F of 0? 1. Yay. So what's the y-intercept of this? Zero, 1. Because when you plug a 0 and you get 1. That's what we just figured out. So well, what other point does this function go through? 2, 19. So don't forget, when you plug something into a function, you get an output. That is a point that would be on the graph of that thing. I like it. Nothing new here. We've seen functions before. These, just, these are nice. There's not going to be any, on, anything on the bottom. It's not going to be any over x plus 1 shit that's going to make the domain at all freaky. Because polynomials are supposed to be nice. All right, let me see. Where's the next place I want to go? Here, I want to do this real quick before we head out. Page 87. I just want to show you, this is pretty much what we were just talking about. This whole section, section 5-4, is all like terms. The only weird thing, look at number 2. Try to do number 2. Let's see if you guys pick up on the easy mistake to make. So you guys are like, I pick up on it by doing it, Jeff. No, don't do that. What's the operation in between? Minus. So it's not foil yet. <clears throat> By the way, if you love foil, I wish it had never been invented. The idea of that stupid FOIL. We don't need it. You'll see. Somebody has a don't touch my foil. Please, dear God, though, I, I'll, I'll give this kind of problem on a test. This one? I know we're doing that one. But I'll give this, and somebody will multiply. And no, it's. It's subtraction. There's no distribution there. No, 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 no. It's just getting like terms together. So pay attention to what's in between. If there's nothing in between, what does that mean? Multiplication. Multiplication, because it's sitting next to each other. Things multiply. It ate. There's something in there. Don't multiply. So what happens here that you've got to be careful about? The negative has to go through. So you get 5y plus 2 minus 3y. Plus 5. So you get 2y plus 7. Wow. You guys see that? That's the only thing really in this section to watch out for. If there's a minus in the middle, take a second and rewrite it. 
Bring that all over. Just change all the signs in that dude. I don't know that. So last thing here. Here. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, page 89. Oh, I'm zipping around, man. It's crazy. We've done this before, and I was always saying we're not here yet, but we've kind of done this before, but this should be like the real, when people think algebra, they think normally this, or they think factoring, which is in our very near future. So what does FOIL mean? Now, let me show you why we didn't need that shit. I always hate, there are certain mnemonic devices which are nice. Like in music, you got face, and every good boy does fine. Anybody know those things? I don't play any music, but I know those. That's like the scale of notes. E, every good boy does fine. And face. Ah, screw it. Doesn't matter. Then he got... Uh, oh, anyway, that's enough of this. Um, foil, first, outer, and last. But that's so stupid. Uh, if that was just there, what would you do? There was just a 2x there. You would just do what? Distribute. Distribute. We already have that property. We understand it. When, when math people come up with mnemonic devices like FOIL, we are sending the message that this is so hard that we need to create these little letters, and it's FOIL, and we can make baked potato jokes or whatever, and so it's helping you do this really hard shit. This ain't hard. I don't just have a 2x there. I also have a 1, so they both distribute. Distribute the 2x, distribute the 1. Repeated distribution, that's all it is. I don't need to remember first, outer, and no, it's bullshit. Sorry if you love it. Keep using it if you're used to it. It's just one of those things I wish we never taught. Uh, so take the 2x gets a turn first. So what's 2x times 3x? What's 2x times 5? 10x. What's 1 times 3? So not the 1 gets a turn. What's 1 times 3x? And what's 1 times 5? Five, okay. And then you just put your like terms together. I don't need F-O-I-L. I don't need them to help me remember because I'm just distributing more than once. I already know how to distribute. Does that make any sense? I mean, to me, I always think the more little songs we have and little F-O-I-L, the more it sounds like you can't do this without these things. That's the wrong message. No. And then, so what do you get here? You get... So FOIL wouldn't you do you a damn bit of good, I know I'm jumping around, but we'll come back, don't worry. FOIL wouldn't do you a damn bit of good here, because you got first, outer, middle, now it's going to be like flimmanamalal. I don't know what the shit that would be. But if you realize, if it's just the Y gets a turn, see what I'm saying? The Y distributes, and then the 3 distributes. So what's y times y squared? y times y squared? y cubed? y times negative 3y? y times 9? 9y. Then the 3 gets a turn. What's 3 times y squared? I'm going to put it with my like terms. I'm going to be smart about this. 3 times negative 3y? 3 times 9? Nine, 9? Nine? Sorry. 27. What happens? That's something called a sum of cubes. Do you see why we're so creative? It's adding cubes. What's 27? 27 is what cubed? Three. Three cubed. So it's the sum of cubes. Hopefully that sounds familiar to a few of you guys. Because later we're going to start here and somehow work our way back to this. And somehow I relate that to the movie Pulp Fiction. If you ever seen that movie? <laughs> Specifically the part where the guy gets his head blown off in the back seat. But, <laughs> sorry if you're tender and sensitive, you should watch that movie. <laughs> so, these won't always have the middle stuff cancel. They won't. They, they won't always cancel. This was just set up specially so they would kill each other. There's a way to balance it so they all kill each other. All right, I think uh, that's enough. If we got into 5-5... Um, five, five, We'll come back and do a few more examples out of those sections. Don't forget Thursday, this quiz. So come tomorrow with questions. 
I'll have your quiz graded, but tomorrow.